Hi, my name's Colin McInnes and what I want to talk to you about is the Ebola crisis. Now the first thing I want to say is that I'm not a public health specialist. I'm a political scientist specialising in international relations. So while I, public health are thinking about Ebola in terms of development of vaccines, development of treatments and how the disease is spreading, what I'm interested in is why did the crisis occur in the first place? Why is it that we have a major outbreak of a disease in West Africa which is beginning to spread to other parts of the world. Now the first point I want to make is that this isn't a unique crisis. Rather Ebola is the latest in a series of crises involving infectious diseases. If you think back a few years we had swine flu, we've had MERS, Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, and a decade or so ago we had SARS. And prior to that of course HIV. So something odd seems to be happening for the first time in living memory, we in the West are experiencing or worrying about the spread of infectious diseases. Why is this? Now the standard explanation is that globalization is allowing people to move much more freely around the world, much more quickly around the world, and this is allowing disease to spread. But I think there's another question we should be asking ourselves. Why are we worrying about these outbreak events? Why are we not worrying so much about endemic conditions. So the hundreds and thousands of people dying in West Africa of Ebola is without doubt a tragedy. And we focus on that. But we're not focusing upon the three quarters of a million children who die each year of diarrheal disease. Easily preventable, but a constant factor. We're worrying, in other words, about outbreaks rather about endemic conditions and we're worrying about things which could spread to us in the developed world and not those conditions which are affecting lives of hundreds of thousands of children in the world today and particularly in poorer areas such as Africa. So first thing as a political scientist which I'm interested in is not only the effects of globalization but the way in which we worry about some things but not other things. But what I want to do now is focus much more precisely on why we're experiencing the Ebola crisis. And what I want to do is run through three explanations as to why this is occurring. The first of these is to do with resources. West Africa is of course one of the poorest regions of the world and we're dealing with some of the poorest countries on earth. And understandably perhaps because of this level of poverty, the public health infrastructure is sadly lacking. And so when Ebola started to appear, the resources simply were not in place to deal with it and contain the outbreak. So the first explanation is one of lack of resources, but this is slightly problematic because since the millennium, more money has been spent on health development than at any other period in human history. In particular, the G8 have committed themselves to spending very large amounts of money on developing Africa and health in Africa. Moreover, we've got charitable foundations such as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation spending unprecedented amounts of money on public health and in particular on public health in Africa. So we've got this problem. Why is it that we're spending more on public health in Africa but we're still getting these health crises there? Now the easy explanation is to say we're still not spending enough. But I think a more sophisticated explanation looks at what we're spending the money on. And in particular, much of the money has been spent on a very limited number of diseases, particularly of course HIV, and understandably HIV, but also upon treating diseases rather than the public health infrastructure which once a disease starts to appear can contain and mitigate the effects of the disease. So it's not simply the amount of money we spend, it's what we spend the money on that we need to focus on. And this is perhaps the first cause of the outbreak of Ebola, that we hadn't spent enough money on basic public health infrastructure and we'd focused a lot of our expenditure on a more limited range of diseases, particularly HIV. Now the second explanation may seem slightly unusual and it's a product of the increased interest in trying to improve public health. We've seen a huge growth in a number of bodies and organisations and private individuals 
who are interested in trying to improve health conditions, and particularly health conditions in Africa. Now this may seem to be a great thing for increased attention, increased resources. What it also means is competing agendas. Not all of these organisations agree on the best means of approaching public health, or best means of developing health in Africa, or the best treatments for particular diseases. And this is reflected in the motivations of these different bodies involved in public health. Some of them may be involved to develop economies, the World Bank for example. Others may be there because health is a basic human right, Oxfam. Or some may be there simply to try and improve public health for no other reason than health is a good in and of itself, the World Health Organization. And these can lead to slightly different solutions in how to deal with a crisis such as Ebola. So to end up having not a single concerted, unified effort, but lots of different efforts pursuing slightly different agendas. And so this is one of the sad ironies of global health policy, that increased interest has led to increased number of bodies involved, which has led to a resulting potential for either poor use of resources and duplication of effort, or competition over what should be done and messages which are confused. Now the third explanation I want to suggest is one which I find personally the most persuasive. And that is that we're focused upon responses to outbreaks, not addressing the causes of outbreaks. If you like, we're dealing with the downstream effects rather than the upstream causes. So when you think about our management of the Ebola crisis, it's focused upon response, sending people to West Africa to help, trying to develop drugs which will help cure the disease. What we're not focusing upon is why the disease happened and spread it so quickly in the first place. And the reason for that is absolutely clear. It's much easier to deal with responses than address the causes. The causes are issues such as poverty, issues such as cultural practices, and issues such as zoonosis, how we relate to the animal kingdom. Many of these diseases originate in the animal kingdom and are spread to humans. And it's much easier to provide a response, even if it appears to be expensive, to be costly in terms of putting people in danger, than it is to address these fundamental causes of disease in the first place. And so finally, where do I think we're going to go? First, the Ebola crisis is clearly a tragedy, something which, if not avoidable, at least could have been mitigated. But we shouldn't lose our perspective on this. There are many other health crises out there, and many more people are going to die of other diseases, including HIV and diarrheal diseases, than Ebola. But secondly, unless we as a global community and as national communities start to think about why is it that these diseases are beginning to emerge, and what are the fundamental upstream causes of disease outbreaks, then unfortunately Ebola is going to be just one of a series of disease outbreaks which will continue to occur in the future. Thank you very much.